the land of Israel given to them by God. The Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you I will curse, and all peoples on earth will be blessed through you. The Lord appeared to Abraham and said to your offspring, I will give you this land. He said to Abraham, after Lot had parted from him, lift up your eyes from where you are and look north and south, east and west. All the land that you see I will give to you and your offspring forever. Forever. I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth, so that if anyone could count the dust, then your offspring could be counted. Go walk through the length and breadth of the land, for I am giving it to you. The Lord made a covenant with Abraham on that day and said to your descendants I will give this land from the river of Egypt to the great river the Euphrates. Abraham fell face down and God said to him the whole land of Canaan where you are now an alien I will give you as an everlasting possession to you and your descendants after you and I will be their God. To Abraham's son Isaac he appeared to him and said for to you and your descendants I will give all these lands and will confirm the oath I swore to your father Abraham. I will make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky, and I will give them all these lands. And through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed, because Abraham obeyed me and kept my requirements, my commands, my decrees, and my laws. Given to Jacob, Abraham's grandson, there above it stood the Lord, I am the Lord the God of your father Abraham and the God of Isaac, I will give you and your descendants the land on which you are lying, the West Bank. Your descendants will be like the dust of the earth and you will spread out to the west and to the east and to the north and to the south. All peoples on earth will be blessed through you and your offspring. I am with you and will watch over you and I will bring you back to this land. I will not leave you until I have done what I have promised you. Was given to Israel, which is Jacob's new name. After Jacob returned from Padana Aram, God appeared to him and blessed him. He said to him, Your name is Jacob, but you're no longer be, going to be called Jacob. Your name is going to be Israel. So he named him Israel, and he said to him, I am God Almighty. Be fruitful and increase in number. A nation and community of nations will come from you, and, your, and kings will come from your body. The land gave to Abraham and Isaac, I also give to you, and I will give this land to your descendants after that. Given to the Israelites in Egypt. I've come down to rescue them from the land of the Egyptians and bring them up out of that land into a good and spacious land, a land flowing with milk and honey, the home of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites. He says to Moses, Say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, sent me to you. This is my name forever, the name by which I am to be remembered from generation to generation. Go assemble the elders of Israel and say unto them, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, appeared to me and said, I've watched over you and seen what has been done to you in Egypt, and I have promised to bring you up out of your misery into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Pezzarites, Hivites, and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. Therefore say to the Israelites, I will bring you to the land I swore with uplifted hand to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob. I will give it to you as a possession. I am the Lord. It is unconditional. The land given unconditional. For the land will be deserted by them and will enjoy its Sabbath while it lies desolate without them. They'll pay for their sins because they rejected my laws and abhorred my decrees. Yet in spite of this, when they are in the land of their enemies, I will not reject them or abhor them so as to destroy them completely, breaking my, my what? My covenant with them. I am the Lord their God, but for their sake I will remember the covenant with their ancestors who are brought out of Egypt in the sight of the nations to be their God. I am the Lord. These are the decrees, the laws and regulations that the Lord established on Mount Sinai between himself 
and the Israelites through Moses. If his sons forsake my law and do not follow my statutes, if they follow, violate my decrees and fail to keep my commands, I will punish their sin with the rod, their iniquity with flogging. But I will not take my love from him, nor will I ever betray my faithfulness. I will not violate my covenant or alter what my lips have uttered. Once for all, I have sworn by my holiness, and I will not lie to David, that this line will continue forever and his throne and dear before me like the sun. It will be established forever like the moon, the faithful witness in the sky. <coughs> the land was not given to Ishmael. God said, Yes, but your wife Sarah will bear you a son, and you will call him Isaac. I will establish my covenant with him as an everlasting covenant everlasting covenant for his descendants after him. As for, Ish, as for Ishmael, I have heard you. I will surely bless him. I will make him fruitful and will greatly increase his numbers. He will be the father of twelve rulers and I will make him a great nation. But my covenant I will establish with Isaac whom Sarah will bear to you by this time next year. Not only that, but Rebekah's children had one and the same father, our father Isaac. Yet before the twins were born or had done anything good or bad, in order that God's purpose in election might stand, not by his works, but by him who calls, she was told, the older will serve the younger. Just as it is written, Jacob I loved, but Esau I hated. God promised to bring them back to the land. Then the Lord your God will restore your fortunes and have compassion on you and gather you again from all the nations where he scattered you. Even if you've been banished to the most distant land under the heavens, from there the Lord your God will gather you and bring you back. He will bring you to the land that belonged to your fathers and you will take possession of it. He will make you more prosperous and numerous than your fathers. Let's see here. The Lord have compassion on Jacob. Once again, he will choose Israel and will settle them in their own land. Aliens will join them and unite with the house of Jacob. Gentiles will take them and bring them to their own place. And the house of Israel will possess the nations as men servants and maidservants in the Lord's land. They will make captives of their captors and rule over their oppressors. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather you from the west. I will say to the north, Give them up, and to the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. I myself will gather the remnant of my flock out of all the countries where I have driven them and will bring them back to their pasture, where they will be fruitful and increase in number. I will place shepherds over them who will tend them. And they'll no longer be afraid or terrified, nor will any be missing. These days are coming, when I will raise up to David a righteous branch, a king who will reign wisely and do what is just and right in the land. In his days Judah will be saved and Israel will live in safety. This is the name by which he will be called, the Lord our righteousness. So then the days are coming, when people will no longer say, as surely as the Lord lives who brought the Israelites out of Egypt, but they will say, As surely as the Lord lives who brought the descendants of Israel up out of the land of the north and out of the countries where he had banished them, then they'll live in their own land. For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Then you will call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. I will be found by you and will bring you back from captivity. I will gather you from all the nations and places where I banished you. And I'll bring you back to the place from which I carried you into exile. There's many passages proving that that was a covenant that will never be broken and the land always belonged to them. Let's 
see if we can find a few more in the time remaining. He will never forsake Israel. Time is coming, declared the Lord, when I make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with the forefathers when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt, because they broke it, the covenant, though I was a husband to them. This is the covenant I will make with the house of Israel after that time. I will put my law in the minds and write it on their hearts. I will be their God and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother, saying, Know thy Lord, the Lord, because they will all know me from the least of them to the greatest. For I will forgive their wickedness and remember their sins no more. I'll sprinkle clean water on you and you'll be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. Give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. Remove you from your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. I'll put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. You will live in the land I gave your forefathers. You will be my people, and I will be your God. I will save you from all your uncleanness. I will call for the grain and make it plentiful and will not bring famine upon you. I will increase the fruit of the trees and the crops of the fields so that you will no longer suffer disgrace among the nation because of famine. Then you will remember your evil ways and wicked deeds and you will loathe yourselves for your sins and detestable practices. I want you to know that I am not doing this for your sake, declares the Sovereign Lord. Be ashamed and disgraced for your conduct, O house of Israel. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. On the day I cleanse you from all your sins, I will resettle your towns and the ruins will be rebuilt. The desolate land will be cultivated instead of lying desolate inside of all who pass through it. They will say this land was laid waste, has become like the Garden of Eden. The cities that were lying in ruins, desolate and destroyed, are now fortified and inhabited. Then the nations around you that remain will know that I am the Lord, that I the Lord have rebuilt what was destroyed and replanted what was desolate. I the Lord have spoken and I will do it. This is what the Sovereign Lord says, Once again I will yield to the plea of the house of Israel and do this for them. I will make their people as numerous as sheep, as numerous as the flocks for offerings at Jerusalem during her appointed feast. So will it turn the ruined cities be filled with flocks of people, for they know I'm the Lord. You got some writings about Gentiles. And if they, Israel, do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you Gentiles were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, which is Israel, how much more readily will these the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers, so that you may not be conceited. Israel has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, those who believe in the Messiah. If you would read and understand It is not debatable in reality and truth that this land called Israel that is inhabited by Jewish people, Israelites, does not belong to them. It always has been, it is now, and it always will be. Go through your history book. Look at all the times foreign invaders came in took it over, then they'd always have to go back, fight it out, take it back, do a repeating cycle. This is truth, no matter what a man tells you. So, it's up to you. It's not up to me. These are the words of God Himself. So enjoy. I hope I've stirred interest. Seek the truth and you'll find it. God bless you all. I'll talk to you soon.